We're going to take a quick break. Coming up later in the show, the idea is the league is considering free throws for flopping. Good idea or not. But before that, Jock Landale, Phoenix Sun Center, is standing by. Yes, we're going to get the scoop on everything. We want to hear what he thought about this Game 7. And, well, former Spurs are always welcome here. When Run It Back returns. Run it back, run it up, and run it back, run it Oh, Landale the dunk. Chuck Landale finishes it off. Landale and and one. Oh, he's doing it all right now. It's fun to watch yourself on a loop. Joining us today, Jock Landale for the Phoenix <laughs> Suns Center. And I was going to get right into Game 7, Jock. And thank you. I know it's early out on the West Coast. But before we came back, you were telling us about your day and why you're stuck in Los <laughs> Angeles. And I would love for you to share this story. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we we took a little trip um, right after season. And, and we, we went out to dinner. And we were kind of at dinner discussing the possibility of, of going to Europe and um just spending a week out there because we've got some stuff on out there next year that we needed to kind of check in on we came back from dinner and the dog was sitting there and my passport was just spread out across the room so the dog definitely had other plans in that regard so right now we're doing a little trip out to san uh, san francisco to get a new passport which has just been a pain in the ass so that's that to expedite a passport and it's a golden retriever for anybody who's wondering if you're in the market for a dog I don't know if that sells yep. you on a golden retriever or sways you away from he's a golden sale. retriever. He's on sale for cheap right now, so just he's uh, on sale. <laughs> poor little guy. Just didn't want you to leave. All right, so <laughs> I know we got basketball to talk to, and we had the uh, the improbable happen this past week. We got a game seven out of what seemed like a, a very easy sweep for the Miami Heat. What were your reactions as a player watching a, a team like Boston come back from something like that? I mean. It, it, like well, when they when they came out and said don't let us get one I, I really like believe that because momentum as you know in the nba is is a crazy thing and and once a team gets going just like miami had it going in the first three it's it's really hard to slow them down and stop them so i felt watching watching that series unfold that boston did a great job of kind of getting the momentum swing back on their side and i i thought that it was going to be tough to um to slow them down but every win that they had i was you know, it was without Gabe Vincent, Vincent, who was a huge piece of the puzzle for them. And then, you know, Jimmy had a couple off nights, Bam had a couple off nights, and, and their role players kept kind of ticking along. So I felt as though the whole time, if they could just get their, the whole thing to kind of click and come together, then then that fourth win was going to be a no-brainer. And it took them until game seven, but, you know, I, I feel I really feel as though their, their bench and their role players stepped up in a huge way. And... Um, all those undrafted guys, as people like to keep calling them, uh, they, they were huge. And Caleb Martin was massive for them last night and being able to kind of help them get across the line. But I felt, felt as though last night was kind of the complete picture for Miami and, and they did a great job of just banding together and, and, and doing what it took to, you know, win at the right time. So, Jock, the Heat are now going to face the Nuggets, who beat your sons in the West Semis. Um, do you think the Heat can do this? Can they really pull this off and win? And do you think there's anyone there that can really contain or stop Nikola Jokic? I just don't believe you can stop Jokic um, playing against him and, and, you know, trying to push him to the brink of, of, you know, fatigue and just slow him down as much as possible by working him, you know, uh, up and down the court nonstop and crashing every board. He really is able to just take his foot off the gas from from an intensity standpoint, but still be able to pick apart part of the defense. So I don't necessarily believe that they're going to be able to stop Yoke. Um, I think it's more about can you stop the players around him from from being massive contributing factors? Can you hold Jamal to 15 to 20 rather than giving him 30 a night? Um, I think that there are some huge players uh, that Bruce Brown makes on a, on a regular basis. Can you kind of cut those out? Um, and then I think their secondary unit, can you do a great job of kind of um, hurting them? I think that's where, where, where you can really win games. It's, 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 a, it's, a, tough, it's a tough matchup for any team. Um, in saying that, Bam, Bam is a really great defensive player who's a nice kind of um, mixture of an all-star, but who also gives an incredible effort every single night. And I think that that is a rare combination that maybe he hasn't seen uh, yet in the playoffs. So um, 
It's going to be, it's going to be, inter- it's going to be an interesting one. Um, I believe there's that Miami I was thinking about last night. I think that they can really push them in this series and, and, and surprise a lot of people. The other thing is, is there's been this constant narrative around Miami of being the underdogs. And, and I believe that that's where Boston might've lost a few games at the start was they took their foot off the gas thinking, Oh, this is just, this, this is an eight seed. We, we can, you know, come in and get this done um, with our eyes closed. And, and obviously that didn't happen. So, I think this is going to be a series. I don't think it's going to be a walk in the park like some people might believe it's going to be. Um, Miami's tough. They make great adjustments. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm not entirely sure who's, who Dem is going to defend them with. Um, so I feel as though this is going to be a tough matchup for both teams. Big fella, you, you, you got a lot of praise for the job you did on Nikola Jokic and you guys' series, and you had some great minutes in that series. What's it like guarding Jokic? I mean, this is a guy who can do literally everything on the court at that size. <laughs> Give us an idea of what it's like to just have to deal with that matchup in a playoff series. It's tough, man. It is really tough. Um, I have I have a few players in the back of my head where, you know, I defend him as well as I can, and he just has this feathery touch, which is damn near impossible to stop. So um, I wasn't really too concerned with with – whether or not he had 53 on a given night or if I held him to, you know, 20, 17 and 18. And, and it was funny. And in that series, some people were saying, oh, you know, I got the best of him on any given night. And then I look at the, the box score and the guy's got 27, 18 and 16. It's like, well, it, it's kind of tough to see it that way from my position. But my whole mindset was just like slow him down as much as possible by by giving a by giving a great effort every single possession and just working myself to exhaustion because I kind of know where my limit will be. But seeing if I can bring him to that just a little bit quicker, given the minute, you know, uh, discrepancy and everything that we, we were playing. So I knew that I was going to get 20 to 25 minutes um, in, in games three and four, and then I was going to just take it from there. But I wasn't really too concerned with whether or not he made buckets and, and, and did what he does because he's a two-time MVP for a reason. All I was concerned with was crash the glass every single time and just kind of run through run through him as much as possible and then up and down the court as, as much as possible. And then on top of that, it was like, you know, making sure that I wasn't doing, you know, the NBA thing where you just kind of walk into a non-ball. It was sprint down to the baseline, make him touch the baseline with me and then come flying back up and into an on-ball at half court. And I was just trying to really wear him down as much as possible so that, you know, we could, I never thought we were going to stop him on the offensive end, but could we get more production out of our guys offensively uh, with him being tired on the defensive end? So that's where my, my mind was at the whole time. Um, I had the luxury of kind of sitting back and watching those games one and two unfold um, courtside. So uh, it was, I feel I felt as though I had like a good <laughs> idea of what I had to do. So, yeah. Yeah, Jock, keeping it with the big fellas, uh, DeAndre Ayton, he's got a lot of criticism all season long, especially in the postseason. And you defended him. You said, you know, I'm tired of people shitting on him, basically. Uh, <laughs> what uh, what, what did his critics not see that you as his teammate, as his boy, see every single day in the facility, in the locker room? Yeah, I mean, DA to me is someone who, who copped the brunt of criticism ever since um, – Obviously, I wasn't on the team last year, but ever since their loss to uh, to Dallas last year in Game Seven, and when I came into the facility, there was a lot of there was a lot of negativity being kind of slung towards him, and I got to really know the guy over a year, and I thought that he was a great teammate. Um, every single time that I was out there competing, he was the first one off the off the bench to kind of you know clap and come talk to me and. Um, he was always kind of in my ear about what to do next. And, and then that, that trickled over just into the locker room and then into the practice facility. And then it was, you know, we were hanging out off the court as well. And I just kind of got fed up with with hearing about how this guy was, you know, took, took me in from the start of the year. And I saw him kind of always being up and about and clapping for his teammates. And I know that these are little things, but um, – and, and, and I know that there is a side to – you know, we're basketball players and we need to perform on the court, but there was just so much more that he was he was doing well that people weren't necessarily recognising. And me being from Australia, me being from a culture that kind of, you know, claps and emphasises, um, 
you know, the teammate aspect of everything. I thought that that was something that was being overlooked completely. The other thing was we were in the middle of a playoff battle and it was obvious that all this chat and, and talk was getting to him. So I was like, someone's got to step up here and let him know that he's not just in this by himself and he's not just, you know, like I'm not cool with how people were talking about him uh, being one of my boys. So all I did was just kind of be who I was and 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 said, you know, enough's enough and, and this guy deserves to know that, you know, we've we got him we got his back and, and, and that he's not in this thing alone. So um, there's a lot of things that DA does well, you know, even on the court, even though he wasn't having the best series, like we all understood that. And I think he understood that um, he had a great year and, and he was a huge piece of the puzzle for us early on in the season and through the whole, the whole regular season, he had a, he had a good series against, um, against the Clippers, but he was fine on his feet. And, you know, we went through a huge transition during all star break and he was, he was, um, his role changed drastically. So I feel, I felt like he needed to hear that from someone within the organization. I know that Monty was, was, was trying to be in his ear about it, but I thought one of us players needed to step up and just let him know uh, publicly that, that we had his back. You mentioned coach Monty and he obviously was fired shortly after the series. Uh, how, how did you feel about that situation? You know, were you surprised? Uh, did, did you, were you hoping he'd stay on? What, what was your vantage point with that? Yeah, I mean, I, I love playing for Monty. Um, you know, those decisions are obviously well out of my control. But um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed playing for Monty. I, I, he, I mean, he gave me my first real NBA opportunity ever, and I'm, I'm going to be forever grateful for that. Um, someone that that I thought did a really good job within his role of, of kind of managing our team and, and and helping us through the season, despite you know there was despite all the criticism that was around us, despite all the changes that we went through um, roster and organization base. Um, I, I thought Monty did a, did a hell of a job. So um, you know I, I can't really speak on the, the the decision that was made because that's well above my pay grade and. Um, <laughs> All I can say is that, like, I'm, I'm I'm very appreciative of what Monty did for me, and and you know enjoyed my time with him throughout the year, and in kind of navigating a pretty rough terrain for the most part. Jock, what type of coach do you think would be best suited for you guys moving forward? What characteristics would you look at? Yeah, I think that uh, I think that a coach that can really manage our our locker room is is huge and necessary and I think that someone who can kind of piece together a championship winning team who's probably you know done it in the past um would be would be great for us because at this point it really feels as though the the Phoenix Suns is you know we're going for it all and, and we need to get across the line at some point so I think that the only question that really needs to be asked is who's best suited to be able to help us do that and I mean that's where I sit on on that fact on that matter is is you know we need to win a championship. We we all want to win a championship. We're here to win a championship. So, how can we how can we best you know pick a head coach to help us do that? Um, obviously, there's there, there's I think there's three names on the on the card right now. I don't, I'm not entirely sure, but um, yeah, I think that I think that there's some great options there for us um, in, in going forward, and, and we've got to wait and see what happens. <laughs> Uh, you and your former teammate, Mikhail Bridges, uh, have a hilarious, very interesting uh, relationship online. Uh, have one of you posted anything that you thought might have crossed the line at all, or is this all in good fun? No, nah, never. I, th I, think, I think people really, uh, look, I need to take it a step further from where I sit. I need to really start outing some of his, his personal life and, and, yes. and just letting him know to cool it a little bit. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, I think that some of the some of the uh, some of the people on Twitter took that last one a little bit to heart and uh, really start. Even some of the Phoenix Suns fans, I had to text them after. And I was like, man, I don't even think I can go at you anymore because these Phoenix Suns fans, even when you're gone, they jump on your side instead of mine. So uh, I think Mikhail's a little bit of a protected species, and I've got to I've got to cool it just a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah, there's no font in Twitter for sarcasm. Unfortunately, people still don't get no. it after how many years the thing's been out there. But um, obviously, I'm going to ask about Pop. Rookie season, San Antonio, under Popovich. Um, did you, what did you learn? Are there any stories you can share? Uh, man, I, le I learned a lot. Um, first <laughs> off, it was it was pretty cool to be a part of the um, the, the the winning record. Uh, that, that was a really sick experience to be able to kind of 
play a part in a, a very, very small part in uh, in that. I think we only won like 23 games or something, but um, we got we got across the line, so that was good. Um, but yeah, no, nah, that, that was a really cool part um, of of my career was being able to see see that unfold. And um, in terms of stories, I, I haven't got too many for you that kind of top the ones that I've heard out there, but. You know, in terms of what I learned, it was just it was about managing the NBA space. Um, I will say that, like my first my first week in the facility, he came to me and I kind of sit back on it now. And I'm like, I was probably sarcastic, but he he came to me the first practice and he was like, right, I want you to do like a five minute presentation on the Joe Biden infrastructure bill that's about to be passed for like three trillion dollars. And I was like, is this, is this guy serious? It's like, I don't even know if he's serious. So I went home and like in my notebook, like writing down this full speech about it. And I was like, all right, I'm ready to go. And then like a week passed, I didn't say anything in a week passed. And I was like, pop, like I got this speech written down. Like I put some serious time into this. You want me to make this speech, but what's going on? And he was like, oh, I was being sarcastic. But now that, you're, now that I know that, you are for sure telling us about this. So. <laughs> I had to get up in front of the whole group and like read it out of this notepad, and I was just like, "God damn!" Like I definitely could have dodged that. But, yes, um, this is awesome. Yeah, that, that was that was a good pop one. Uh, but yeah, he he just he taught me a lot about the perspective on 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 life outside of basketball and and making sure that you know we don't just get too obsessed and too involved in this and and, and have some perspective on the world going on around us. And I think you see that day in and day out with his with his efforts outside uh, in the community and what he's kind of doing for america right now i was about to say texas but he's really doing a lot for america so um yeah he's he's a pretty incredible man and to be doing what he's doing now and um i don't think pop's going to retire anytime soon with the number one draft pick coming in so uh, yeah. i think we'll be around <laughs> for a long time Woohoo! <laughs> Jock, you really established yourself as an NBA player this year, of course, as, whether it's starting, coming off the bench. Um, I think you've proven that. But now you look into it, you're going to be a restricted free agent this offseason. Are you hoping to go back to the Suns? What's your outlook when you go into free agency this summer as a guy that's going to be sought after? Yeah, um, I, would, I would love to go back to the Suns. We, we really enjoyed the city. We really enjoyed the fan base, the organization, the basketball um, we, we bought a house there because we loved it so much and we, we thought this could be a home for us long term. Um, I do understand, however, that it's that it's a business and, and that, you know, um, there's a lot to go through and a few hoops to go through in terms of, you know, what, what can take care of our family. So I'm not totally set on Phoenix and nothing else, but but I definitely want to return there. Um, had a phenomenal year there and uh we, we just enjoy the the culture and the lifestyle in phoenix and and then the organization's great you know the teammates there love playing with cp book kd um you know th these are all guys that i really enjoy playing with and would like to do so for a long time but it's a business and at, at some point you know being 27 i really have to look at it as such and and make sure that i'm taken care of long term and going forward so um yeah, there's there's a lot to happen. It's exciting times, but um, but yeah, you know, if, if we can figure out a way to get it done with Phoenix, I would I would love to say that. Jock, you went undrafted, 2018 draft. Are you one of those guys who has the list in your head of all the big fellas who went drafted before you? Do you got like smoke for Mo Wagner every time you see him? Is that in there for you? <laughs> no, nah, I mean, I, I don't even, I don't even think I was undrafted. I tell everyone I was the 61st pick in the 2018 draft, so I don't even look at it like that. But um, yeah, I definitely, I, I wouldn't say I have a list as such. Uh, but I definitely have a little bit of chew on my shoulder and I feel as though given what I had to go through to get back into the NBA and all the hard days that I had to do out in Europe by myself and stuff, there's, it, it really changed who I was as a person and, and, and taught me to kind of never take my foot off the gas and, and make sure that I'm always in the gym and there's, and knowing that there's someone behind me who's always, you know, he's always trying to get out in front. So, um, yeah, definitely, definitely not one of those guys who has a list, but there there are certain people that I look forward to playing and, and making sure that, you know, I can prove a point against them because I know that that helps me long term. So, um, yeah, it's it was a long road to get here and, and, and I'm really pumped to be here and, you know, have, you know, done a job this 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 uh, this postseason to be able to solidify myself a little bit. But, um, 
yeah, I attribute a lot of that to to kind of what I had to go through for those three years and two years in Europe and then a year back home in Australia to to be able to get here. And um, yeah, it's pretty cool to think about. Pretty cool to think about. Jock, we, we appreciate the time early in the morning. And I know you have a really fun day ahead of you to get your passport. Um, <laughs> what do you call your haircut before we let you go? What do you call it? Sexy? I don't know. Nice. That's all know. I was looking for, Jock. That's all I was looking for. <laughs> Thank you so much. So much. Uh, have a great off season. We'll see you next season. Shams, we'll see you tomorrow. So uh, don't go too far. And uh, when we come back, it's Chandler, it's Eddie, it's me. You're probably going to change your life when Run It Back returns. Run it back, run it back, run it back. <laughs>